الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم تسليما كثيرا إخوة الإيمان أبارك لكم دخول هذا الشهر الكريم I congratulate you and I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gave us a chance once again to go through this noble month of Ramadan May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all to benefit from it to the maximum um, I want to talk today about a very important uh, pillar for all the good deeds. Any good deeds, including fasting, will not be accepted unless this condition is fulfilled. This pillar is there, which is sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sincerity means to do the good deed seeking the pleasure of Allah alone subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it comes to Ramadan, there are three hadiths by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And these three hadiths or three statements are reported in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. Uh, so it's an agreed upon statements. The first one says, من صام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه Whoever fast the month of Ramadan out of faith, out of belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking the pleasure of Allah alone, احتسابا He does it to please Allah, to get the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he does that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive his past sins. مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Whoever fasted the month of Ramadan out of sincere faith and hoping for, the, for, the, for a reward from Allah, then Allah, uh, then all his past sins will be forgiven. And the second statement, مَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ This one is talking about making tahajjud or taraweeh, making voluntarily, uh, voluntarily prayers uh, in the nights of Ramadan. مَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا Again, it qualify the... Um, the reward will be given for that one who does that out of faith, seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And the third statement says, مَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Whoever performed the daily, the, the night prayers, or fell the night of power, with prayers, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive his past sins provided he did, does that out of faith and seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. But if we think about it, sincerity or what we call it ikhlas is not limited to the month of Ramadan. It's a precondition for every ibadah. But in Ramadan, there is more highlighting of this uh, condition, more um, concentrating about the importance of this uh, condition. In a hadith narrated again by Bukhari and Muslim, uh, it's a hadith Qudusi, in which the Prophet Sallallahu says that كل عمل ابن آدم يضاعف all the deeds, good deeds of the son of Adam will be rewarded multiple faults. Al-Hasanatu Ashru Amthaliha. You do one good deed, you get ten 
rewards or you get 10 multiple times the reward up to 700 times then the Prophet ﷺ said Allah says except when it comes to fasting there is here a special case Allah says فَإِنَّهُ لِي وَأَنَا أَجْزِي بِهِ so as for the reward of fasting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell the angels that record the good deeds and the bad deeds when it comes to fasting let it to me I will reward it is not an assigned specific reward it has no limits because it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly Allah says إِلَّا الصَّوْمْ فَإِنَّهُ لِي وَأَنَا أَجْزِي بِهِ Except for uh, fasting. Fasting is for me. And I will give the reward for it. Allah says, and I will give reward for it. So just remember, this is Hadith Qudsi. Hadith Qudsi is a hadith when the Prophet وسلم, says something and he related to Allah as Allah is the one who said it. It is not Quran, it's not a statement from uh, the Prophet ﷺ directly, but the Prophet ﷺ is reporting what Allah says. This is called Hadith Qudsi. It's a specific type of Hadith. Uh, and this is one example of it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, all the good deeds that a Muslim will, does, will, will do, he will be, there will be a pre-assigned level of reward, except for fasting. Fasting is for Allah, as Allah said, and Allah will reward for it. In a hadith narrated by Muslim, the same hadith, there is a, an extra statement when Allah explained why it is fasting is for him. He said, the son of Adam, يَدَعُ شَهْوَتَهُ وَطَعَامَهُ مِنْ أَجْلِي He abandons his passion and food, and food for my sake. And that's why this ibadah is supposed to enrich sincerity. Sincerity, which is, we call it ikhlas. Ikhlas means to do the deeds with a pure intention, not for any worldly gains but to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Of course, there are many hadiths and ayat that uh, talks about the importance of ikhlas. And there is hadiths that show the grievousness, uh, like how serious, how a bad impact. Uh, it's, a, it's a warning against not having sincerity. There is a hadith in Sahih Muslim when the Prophet ﷺ mentioned three types of people who in the face of it um, did very good deeds. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that the إِنَّ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Three categories. He mentioned three categories. When he said the first of men who will be decided on the day of judgment will be a man who died as a martyr. So shaheed. A shaheed and the one who memorize Quran and recite Quran, hafiz of Quran, qari, and the third one who spend in, in, in ways that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallam is telling us that these uh, three categories will be brought in the day of judgment and they will be interrogated and they will be reminded of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to them and then they will be asked what did you do about it these blessings of Allah the first one will say I fought for your sake O Allah until I died he said no you didn't do it for my sake you did it so that people will say you are brave. And it was said. So you got your rewards. That's what you are uh, looking for fame or maybe for power 
or whatever an intention that was not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and you got what you were after so now you have nothing uh, that there is no reward for you today actually in the hadith mentioned that he will be dragged on his face he will be dragged on his face and he will be thrown in the hellfire so that is a punishment for doing something that was supposed to be for Allah alone but you do it for uh, worldly gains this the same thing will be happening to the one who recited the Quran so that people will say Hafiz or Qari or he has a beautiful voice. He got what he was asking for and he has no reward in the Day of Judgment. And the same will happen again to the one who spent so that people will say he is brave, he is courageous. He is also will have the same uh, fate as these two categories. He will be dragged on his face and thrown in the hellfire. So that is a reminder for all of us to observe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to performing good deeds after working on it and maybe you have lots of effort. Don't waste that by having uh, bad intentions, by showing off. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as in a hadith narrated in Sahih Muslim, Allah says, and this is again hadith Qudsi, أنا أغنى الشركاء عن الشرك من عمل عملا أشرك فيه معي غيري تركته وشركه which says uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying I am the one who does not stand in the need of a partner. If anyone does anything, in which he associates anyone else with me, I shall, I shall abandon him, I shall leave him with one whom he associates, associates uh, with Allah. Meaning, you do it for fame, you got fame. You do it for people, go get re your reward from the people you do it for. When you do ibadah, uh, it has two conditions. To do it, to the way that conforms to the Sharia, to the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do it properly, and then to do it seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, grant all of us sincerity in trying to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month, to, uh, uh, to work hard, but not just working hard, working and observing our intentions. Purify our intention. We should remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who rewards, is the one who has all the dominion in his hands, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, there are uh, this is the warning, what I mentioned, warning from uh, not having pure intentions. But if you have pure intentions, if you have sincerity, if you have ikhlas, then there will be lots of rewards. And I'm going to mention uh, a hadith narrated in Bukhari and Muslim, which shows the benefits of, of sincerity in this life before the day after. Um, the hadith is telling us about three people uh, who entered a cave and while they are in the cave a big rock came uh, fall down and um, closed the opening of the gate so they cannot get out from the cave anymore uh, they couldn't push the this big rock it's very big very heavy so they reminded each other that none will take us out of the cave except by supplicating to Allah, making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove this rock by supplicating to him with some sincere deeds that we did. 
So every one of them mentioned something he did. I, 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 I'm gonna mention the hadith in the um, in the description. You can read the hadith, but because it's um, uh, a little bit long, every one of them mentioned a type of good deed. One was very nice to his parents. Another one uh, was uh, demonstrating um, uh, fear from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, when it comes to his desires and whims. He resisted those desires, seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And the third one, when it comes to transaction, um, financial transaction, dealing with money. He was honest, seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And, and the hadith actually mentioning that they did this. Uh, they said, oh Allah, if I did that for your sake alone, then please, oh Allah, uh, let this rock move. And the rock did move. So... I'm gonna mention just the, the part of the hadith that uh, they told themselves Nothing will take you out of this problem except by supplicating to Allah with your pure deeds. So one of them, after he mentioned what he did, the good deed he did, he said, Allahumma in kuntu fa'altu dhalika abtigha'a wajhik. Oh Allah, if I did what I did, seeking your pleasure alone. Uh, and when he did that, he mentioned that dua and he supplicated that way, that um, rock moved a little bit, but still they cannot come out. The other one, when he mentioned the good deed he did seeking the pleasure of Allah, he said, Allahumma in kuntu fa'altu thalika abtigha'a wajhik fafruj anna ma nahnu fi. The third one, he said, Allahumma in kuntu fa'altu thalika abtigha'a wajhik. Every time they say, if I did what I did seeking your pleasure, oh Allah, uh, uh, let this rock move. And uh, in the end, the, the, the rock has moved completely and they came out of uh, the cave safely unharmed. This shows you that the supplication, you can supplicate with your good deeds, but they will have the effect that supplication, if you, if you did those good deeds, sincerely seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Uh, uh, last uh, um, comment, you know Yusuf alayhi salam, Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam, when he was being seduced by the lady of the palace, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take him out of that trial, that big test. And Allah explained, إِنَّهُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا الْمُخْلَصِينَ We save him because he has pure intentions. He was sincere. إِنَّهُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا الْمُخْلَصِينَ in another recitation, إِنَّهُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا الْمُخْلِصِينَ And that's the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him. So your sincerity will make you stronger when you are in a position of tests. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and help us to fast the month of Ramadan and to make qiyam in the month of Ramadan and to be guided to the night of power to fill it with ibadah and, and, and salah. Uh, doing all these, seeking his pleasure alone uh, so, so that we will succeed and we will uh, be happy and we will get our rewards uh, 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 in full. Uh, and uh, please try to make the most of this month. Don't waste your times. Uh, remember always that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is generous and his generosity has no limits. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your, all, all your deeds. And again, Ramadan Mubarak for you and your families. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thanks for watching our video. 
If you liked what you saw, please consider supporting our message so we can continue to bring you quality Islamic videos. Producing these videos takes effort and your donation will make a big difference in helping us reach thousands of people around the world. Also, please don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll be notified of our future videos. Please visit our website, mymesjid.ca slash donate for more information. May Allah reward you for your support. Oh.